the last episode, I built the pagination for our projects. And in this episode, I will build category filters. We already added categories to all our projects. And as a first step, let's just make them visible in our website. So let's go to the projects template here. And this is what we've done last time. So we defined this PHP block here and we created pagination and then further down built the pagination HTML. Um, and as a first step to make the category visible, I will put it below the title. So let's just put a simple break here and then we can still um, yeah, make it nicer later. Just put a bit of HTML around it to get an idea what we have for every project. So now the categories are visible. We have architecture, editorial project, photography project, and then some more here. So now we need a way to filter our collection of projects by those categories. And it's actually quite easy to do. So let's get back to our block up here. Um, and we can now have a look, a closer look at this chain that we already used to get our projects. And what I often like to do when those chains get longer is to break them down into such lines. And um, this is quite nice to visualize the order in which they are applied. So the order in um, which the methods are applied is actually important. So you can read it out loud and then you get a better idea. So you, we first get all the children and then we get the listed ones. So this is already some kind of filter. So we filter by the listed status and then we paginate that list that we get. And the pagination always comes as a last step. So you get what you need in your collection and then you paginate that collection. So when we want to introduce a new filter, we have to put it somewhere here before the paginate option and the best place, in my opinion, is the last place. Um, because here it makes the most sense. So we already know that we want to have the listed ones and we don't want to care about anything else. So we can make sure that this comes first and afterwards we filter that listed collection um, by the category. So the filter by method um, takes the field name as the first argument and then the value that you want to filter by as the second argument. So let's give this a try with editorial because there are a couple editorial projects in our collection and see if the filter works. Yeah, and it seems to work. So now we have um, only editorial projects in our lists. And as you can see, pagination automatically switched off because there are only three projects. So it's no longer necessary to paginate those. Um, and we already took care of this last time. So this is working really nicely. Such a hardwired filter value like here um, could be useful for cases where we say, okay, we create another field that might be called featured, for example, and then we um, filter by that featured state and say, okay, we only want the featured projects. So we could, could create our own um, yeah, status for pages and, and filter by that. In this case, uh, a hardwired filter really makes sense because yeah, we can just leave it in there and it's fine. But in, in this case here, we uh, somehow need to make this filter value dynamic because yeah, we, later we want to switch it based on the navigation that we are going to build. And the easiest way to do this is via the URL. And when we work with URLs and need to get parameters from the URLs, um, query parameters are yeah, the easiest way to go forward. And you can already see here, I, I did this a couple of times, so it's auto-completing here. So I'm creating a new um, query parameter called filter and I pass the filter value in there. So nothing happens because we don't really work with that filter yet. So we not, somehow need to plug it out from the, um, from the URL and pass it into our filter by method. And this can be done quite easily by creating a new variable. And in Kirby, there is a get helper. And that get helper basically takes whatever is in your query parameter or in your query parameters and assigns it to a variable here. So we now have um, that filter query parameter up here and we just pass it into our variable here. And now we can use that one and replace our 
hard-coded filter. And let's see if this works. Yeah, nice. So now it's switched automatically to photo photography. Uh, we can switch back to editorial. But let's see what happens when we don't specify anything here. So the list is empty because what Kirby basically does here now is it filters by um, a category field that should be empty. And of course, we don't have any projects that don't have a category, so no projects show up. So we need to introduce a condition here. We need to make sure that we only filter when there is a filter value available. And we could do this with an if clause. So we could break down our chain into multiple chains and then filter and create an if clause in between and ask if the filter by value is set or not and then do this. But Kirby has another way to, to stay in those filter chains or in those collection chains. And it is called the when method. So with the when method, we can introduce an, uh, yeah, such a condition right in our chain. And the when method takes the first argument, which is a condition. So anything that could be trueish or falseish, if that's a word. So we could now pass in our filter by variable. And it also checks if the, the variable is empty or not. So um, this is perfect for our filter. So now when the, the filter is empty, nothing happens. And if the filter is filled in, something happens. And whatever happens is been running in this function that you specify as the second argument. So you create a function here and the function automatically gets that the, the result of that uh, the, of that condition or the, the yeah the result of that condition as the first parameter or the yeah the value of that condition sorry um, so we can introduce it into our function like this and within our function we get access to our collection that we have so far with this so this is the reference to the collection that has been going on before and then we can reuse our filter by method and use this and do some filtering um, and this could be anything in here well we could work with the collection any way that we want based on that condition so we could sort it or we could search it or filter it or limit it or whatever we yeah, need to do based on such a condition so this is a really clean and easy way to only run this filter by when the filter is actually filled in so let's see if it works yeah, nice. So now we have an empty filter and all the projects show up. And if we go back to photography, only the photography project shows up. So this is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so our filter is now dynamic and we can easily yeah, change the filters, but there is still no navigation for it. So that's probably the next thing that we want to do. We want to build some navigation for it and let's just plan what we want to build. So we have a navigation element here um, above our projects list and it's going to be a, a list of, of links basically. And it's often easier to hard code some of the HTML first just to get an idea what you actually want to build. And in our case we want to build such simple links and then change the the filter query parameter in our links so we can do it like this relatively or we could pass in the current page url that is a bit cleaner so now we have a way to switch between our categories let's see if that works it looks like yeah it looks still really plain yeah, this works. So now we have a, sw a switch between the, the categories and we can access those. It's probably also a good idea to go back, to provide a way to go back to all projects. So let's add this quickly. And again, we can simply do this by reusing the page URL here without a query parameter and then automatically all the projects will be shown in this case. So that's kind of everything you need to build this. Of course, now we can apply some styling so let's go to our files, to the CSS for this. Oh, I already created some styles. Oh, that's handy. So let's reuse them and apply our filter here. 
so now they should look a bit better. Great. One more thing that we want to do is we want to make this list also dynamic. So we need a way to get a list of um, the categories that are available. And how can we do this? So Kirby provides a simple method to plug all the values from a single field for all the entries that we have in a collection. And it's called plug. So when we want to create such a list of filters, we could do something like projects plug category. So this, this would go through all the projects that we have and then get the category field and take that value and put it back into that uh, list here that we get from, from this variable. And now we can use that instead of hard coding that the filters. And then wrap this in a for each loop. And now replace the parts that could be dynamic. So one would be here and one would be here. And now we should end up with a list of filters. Let's see if this works. Okay, so we have one more that is included, architecture, because that's another filter. But as soon as we click on it, we get a weird result here. Suddenly we jump to a list of filters that has just one entry or three editorial entries here. That's kind of strange. Well, it's actually not that strange when you think about it, because now we switch to architecture and we filter our list of projects by architecture already. And then we end up with a list that only has architecture projects. And from that list, we plug the category. And of course, that is only one architecture project in this case. So as a next step, we need to access all the projects first. So one thing we could do is we could go back and say, OK, let's get that from our children and our listed children. So now we had have all projects. OK, nice. So we now have more categories in here. We you can see there are a few duplicates. We get to that in a second. But in general, it seems to work. Um, this is kind of repetitive. So we already did this here. So let's break this down into an unfiltered list first. OK, let's take this one here. We move it up here. And this is also a bit better to read. So now we know, OK, this is the, the unfiltered one. And then we can do, and we can, can you reuse it here as well. So we now don't repeat ourselves. And we reuse the same collection twice. That looks already a lot better. So now we have the list of all the categories, but they, we still ha have to deal with the duplicates here. So we have editorial three times, because there are three projects with editorial. And the other ones are no duplicates, but because there's just one project for each category. And we can control this in our plug method. So the plug method has two more arguments that we can use for this. The second argument is not really useful for our use case. We can specify a split um, character here. And that normally would be something like a, a simple um, comma, where you can split such a, a, key, a value of a field. Um, for example, if you have a list of tags and they are separated by comma, you could split that and then get a, a list of all those tags, even if they are separate by comma. So that would, one, uh, would be one thing. We, we don't really need it. So we can just pass null here. And the third argument in this method would be, um, should it be unique or not? So it's not unique by, by default. But if we set it to true, the plug method will now only give us a unique list of all the filters. So now we get a unique list of filters. And we are basically done with our simple filter here. That's it for today. This is how you create such a filter for your projects. As a next step, because this gets yeah, a bit messy here, we would need to move this, move this to a controller now. Um, that's one of the next videos. See you there. Bye bye.